Now it is my great pleasure to introduce Bert Weiss, Operations and Maintenance Manager with the City of Hayward's Public Works Department. Hey, Bert. Hey, how are you? Thank you, Corey. Great. Thank how you are you? Me. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. good. I'm glad to hear it. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody that, that's uh, here. I mean, this is something that I'm still not entirely used to doing these Zoom meetings and talking to a computer, but uh, here we are. And um, and let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let me uh, point out real quick that this uh, slide presentation is actually an abbreviated version of, I think, about a 120-page photo journal that I uh, did uh, on this piping project. It was kind of this oddball special piping project um, that, that uh, just a handful of my folks and I uh, ended up getting involved in. And uh, anybody that, that really actually takes an interest in any of this stuff uh, can, uh, can just reach out to me and I'm happy to share the, the full photo journal. So um, that's that. A little bit of a background on this thing. I, I started here in Hayward in 2013 and in November of 2013. And um, by, oh boy, February or so, I, I had heard that, oh boy, Caltrans had just reported that there's some water coming from this overpass. And this overpass happened to be one where we have a 30-inch uh, uh, transmission main that, that uh, leads up to the overpass next down to 20 and then picks up to 30 on the other side of it again. And so the initial report was, oh yeah, 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 don't worry, that's just Caltrans' irrigation that's screwed up and, and uh, yeah, it, it's not an issue. And it turned out it wasn't the irrigation. Uh, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, 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 you know what, this isn't a major problem. It's, it's actually uh, it's a transition coupling that, that goes from uh, the uh, asbestos concrete 30 inch pipe down to the 20 inch welded steel pipe that's going through the overpass. Not a problem, uh, we'll take care of it. And uh, we hired a contractor who came out and, and like $30,000 later, we came to find that, that uh, it really wasn't the transition coupling. What had happened is the pipe that was in the overpass that actually kinked. I don't know if anyone's ever noticed this, but if you go across these overpasses in, in the Bay Area, especially ones that were built around like the early 70s, it seems, there's a lot of times where you transition from the asphalt to the concrete of the overpass and you kind of take a jump in your car. And then when you come off the other side, you'd kind of do a jump again. Well, that's because the approach up to the concrete structure that the actual bridge, the overpass is soil and, uh, and it, it has settled some. And because our pipe was in there, as the, the ground settled, what ended up happening is the pipe, you know, like I say, kinked. And it wasn't so much that that tore the pipe. What, what caused uh, the, the leak is that the concrete on the inside of the pipe, the, the mortar lining that, that protects the steel from the water, uh, chipped away. And now all of a sudden we have an area that got rusted through, and now this thing's piddling water. And so for, for months, I mean, suddenly everyone freaked out. It's like, oh my God, how are we going to deal with this stuff? And, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of ideas were being thrown around and, and, you know, that included, hey, we'll just use the 20 inch casing or pipe as a casing and we'll run a 16 inch uh, plastic pipe through it. And, and I'm sitting there going, no, 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 no. We have a 30 inch pipe feeding a 30 inch pipe and we're not necking it down even further. And I saw this really as a window of opportunity that, that had opened for us. Uh, it, we had apparently for years, I came to find, been trying to upsize the, the pipe and run a, a parallel second 20 inch pipe in here in that overpass. And Caltrans you know, refused to, to have any part of that uh, since they're the owners of the overpass. And uh, so when, when all of a sudden this, this opportunity came, I, I thought, hey, you know what, let's, let's go for the gusto. I mean, we, uh, we're, we're going to tell Caltrans this is a critical pipe, which it is, that, that we've got a, an emergency, which we did. I mean, it, it was kind of a long-term emergency because we were able to, to valve off the, the, the leak. So this was the actual uh, beginning of the, the project is, is we got inside and then I realized, yeah, we're, we're going to be able to pull a pipe through. But before we have uh, the opportunity to do that, we're going to have to clean out all of the debris that had fallen uh, over over all the decades uh, down into here. 
So originally we were thinking, oh, we'll just use a back truck and basically use a giant shop back and, and suck all the stuff out. Well, we started trying to do that and the, the hose kept uh, clogging left and right. And so we ended up resigning ourselves to the fact that, you know what, we're going to have to do this by hand. So it was literally dust pans and, and foxtail brooms and five gallon buckets that we went in and started pulling out uh, debris after debris pile after debris pile. And here you can see where the, the, a lot of the debris was coming from because the overpass is actually not one structure, it's two that, that came together like so. And here on the other side here, you can see the seam where the two structures kind of come together. Um, and that was the big challenge is uh, this, this stuff that they had in between, which was like a uh, asphalt impregnated cane fiber was starting to fail. And there was a gap in between the, the two uh, things. So we had to be super, super careful uh, when we we're cleaning this out. There is no way that, that we're going to be able to put false work or netting or anything else. Uh, that was going to be so cost prohibitive that, that that wasn't even an option. So we just ended up being really careful. And we just did the, the hard work. And uh, by good fortune, my guys took it all in stride. Everyone was happy. And months and months and months later, uh, it, not until when was it, the, uh, the, the probably November of 2015, I finally got the final okay for my director to proceed, order the parts and, and go ahead with this thing. So um, we went ahead and did that. This was by far the, the biggest pipe uh, that, that my guys here had ever worked on. In fact, I, uh, my biggest pipe before this was a 24 inch uh, ductile pipe. And so, um, you know, we, we started getting the parts rolling in and, and you know, uh, when they arrived, it, it definitely raised a few eyebrows. Here you can see the, the pipe. I, I immediately knew that we wanted TR Flex ductile iron. Uh, basically, Caltrans would only allow either welded steel or uh, ductile. And the reason I went with ductile, I mean, I love welded pipe. Uh, I've got a long, long background in, in welding. I mean, in fact, that's, that's what I did the majority of my life. Uh, prior to getting into water. But uh, the thing I love about ductile is, is I can teach uh, guys how to assemble this stuff within about 20 minutes with common hand tools. So, um, you know, th this was absolutely the way to go rather than, than doing a much more costly and time consuming uh, welded steel pipe. Uh, so we finally ended up getting out there. Uh, we had our parts all lined up. We had the machines delivered. These are, this is just rental uh, equipment, and a rental excavator on either side. And we started digging and right away, we realized that pea gravel was starting to pour into the trench from the, from the sides of the, um, from the sides. And so, you know, that became clear. What they did apparently was they, they built the approach and then there was a gap in between uh, the, the, the uh, structure and the approach and they poured pea gravel in there to fill it. So no wonder this thing settled differentially because you can't compact uh, pea gravel. So of course we, uh, we were disappointed to, to find this happening and we immediately uh, called um, the, the folks at United Trench Safety and said, hey, I, I'm going to need to somehow restrain the, the, the walls, but not necessarily have the normal shoring rams. And so they suggested, oh, why don't you just jam uh, trench plates uh, vertically in there with the, with the excavator? That'd be the first time I'd ever done that. That was the first time any of us here had ever done that. And it worked incredibly well. So uh, the, the trench plates here are, um, are just like three quarter inch, uh, of, I want to say four foot by, by eight foot plates. That, that we jammed into the ground and, uh, and then we were able to start excavating again. So then all of a sudden, you know, we, we get to the point where we're excavating and we should realize, oh great, there was a transition coupling here. What was not shown on any of the asphalts, which were not very accurate, and there's a shock. I mean, how many times does that happen to anybody? Uh, there was a concrete wall that, that basically encapsulated the, um, the, the transition coupling. And so that was an absolute bear uh, to, to start uh, having to, to break through. Uh, and we were out there with, uh, with breakers, with jackhammers, with concrete uh, chainsaws. And we finally managed to, to get to this point. And we realized we had to, to continue further. So I had sprayed you know, the, the green paint on here, indicating just how far uh, down we'd have to go. 
excuse me, and we were doing this for days and days. I mean, it was, um, I mean, they, again, I mean, my guys took it in stride, but uh, it, it was, you know, brutal hard work. And, um, you know, but we, we just kept at it and kept at it until we got through. So then all of a sudden, <coughs> excuse me, um, we got to the point where we now were having to open up the end of the overpass, the concrete plugs on the end of the overpass. Uh, once we got to this point, I, I managed to thread a wire through because you see there's like a little gap in between where the two structures uh, come together. And I came to find that the, the concrete plug was actually about 30 inches thick. Uh, and, and so that was much deeper than any concrete chainsaw uh, could accommodate. And so I started calling around, calling around, uh, asking any of these concrete cutters, how do you get through this stuff? And uh, basically everyone said, oh, you know what, just, just break through it with a jackhammer. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh, my God, I, I do not want to start just jackhammering these people. You know, Caltrans is structure. They're reinforced concrete uh, structure. I need to have clean cuts that open up exactly what we need and no more. And so I stumbled across this outfit called Tal West that had a uh, wire saw. And basically, it's a three-eighths inch diameter uh, saw or wire, wire rope that you can see right here. That what they do is they, they um, uh, use a roto hammer and drill holes through. So we have 30 inch holes that went through. Then you thread the wire through, pull it in through the inside, pull it back out on the outside, and then run it through a set of pulleys. And so this is kind of the wire saw machine. One's a generator and the other's just basically the, the drive for this wire saw. And then you can see the pulleys here. And believe it or not, man, once this thing started cutting, it cut like crazy. I mean, it was, uh, it was an incredible technology. So if anybody ever needs to, to remove, I mean, you could cut the entire overpass in half if, if that's what you wanted. You can cut through steel with this stuff. You can cut through all kinds of things. So this is a wonderful thing to know about. Hey, Bert, quick question. <clears throat> yeah. um, Dave Huey wanted to know, did you consider seismic restrained pipe instead of D, D I? Uh, uh, it is, it's TR Flex, it, it is seismically restrained. I mean, that, that it, it, it's got uh, locking dogs that, that go in place. So, so this stuff does not pull apart. Great, I, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's above and beyond field block gaskets. And, uh, and, and it is 100% uh, seismic uh, sound piping. This, this is the stuff to use. Got it, great, thank you. Um, so now back to this, uh, here you can see we, we, we managed to wire saw through all of this and then we started pulling out the pieces. They, they had actually poured it in a couple of sections so it wasn't just one 30 inch uh, 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 thick section, uh, which we, I mean, we didn't know about until we started pulling it apart. But that's neither here nor there. And uh, out, came, uh, out came the end plug on one side. So we're working on the west side. Uh, we, we got the, the, the overpass open. Now we needed to basically start digging back and creating a uh, pit where we're going to do the loading of the pipe because we're going to pull it from the, the west side to the east. And so we, we just ended up, you know, going back, uh, backing out uh, the, the uh, material here and pulling out the, the 30 inch AC. Basically, we, we cut away the, the, um, the bands where, where the thing comes together. So those are 12 foot lengths that we're pulling out. And now all of a sudden we have shoring in there, which that wasn't going to work because we needed to, to put a pipe in there so that, that we could start pulling the, the new pipe uh, segment by segment into the, into the overpass. So we went back to United Trench Safety and got a uh, shoring shield uh, set up. And normally you would have the, the, um, the uh, pipe uh, on top and bottom but because we needed to have the bottom open, uh, we, we basically ended up using hydraulic rims to, to keep everything apart while we we're digging. And then in the longer run, what we, what we ended up doing is uh, backfilling some material and building up a ramp that, that went up to the actual uh, end of the overpass. So here's a picture of the, the gap that's in between the, the two uh, concrete structures. So, you know, this is actually literally looking down on the freeway. And that's why I was saying we had to be so super careful 
to uh, to make sure that nothing fell through the crack down onto the cars below. Because I mean, you could cause an accident or you could kill somebody. I mean, a, a, you know, concrete uh, that that little spall that fell off. I mean, there was uh, large enough chunks of concrete that we were, you know, peeling off uh, out of here uh, that that really could have done some damage. But um, again, you know, diligence and, and just being careful and deliberate, we managed to to do this, uh, clean it up. But now also notice how rough the the floor is. The concrete was not finished, and and so you know the the whole idea of of how do I get a pipe back in there? Well, the old the welded steel pipe. So it was sitting on a bed of rollers. I wouldn't be able to use the same roller thing with the uh, with the ductile iron because it had bell ends, and so it would be you know jumping the bell end over the roller every time. So I had to to come up with an altogether different way of uh, of getting the pipe pulled in and supported. So you know the consensus from from everybody was, oh, you know what? What we'll do is we'll use the um, the casing insulators. So when you pull a pipe through like a jack and bore casing, there there's uh, insulators, and we'll show those coming up, uh, and, and we'll just use those and uh, and pull it through. And uh, I, I was very skeptical of of the the insulator blocks, the plastic blocks actually holding up. So I said, you know what? Before we even think about you know making any assumptions that that this is going to work. Let's go ahead and get some of these these insulator bands, and you can see the the plastic blocks here. Those are nylon, and I was told by the manufacturer, oh, this is not a problem. 300 feet, this the, the nylon will will drag and and uh, and and it'll slide right along the concrete, no sweat. Uh, again, my me being very very skeptical, we ended up saying, okay, well let's let's try this. So we put on the pulling head, and, and this is just to give you an idea, that's three and a half inch thick steel. I mean, so uh, this stuff is heavy, it's big, um, and you know, that, that's what caused me some concern. <clears throat> and we decided, you know what, let's do a drag test. Let's just pull this thing uh, down an asphalt road that is actually smoother than the interior of the, um, of the overpass and see how the nylon uh, holds up. And you know what, we started uh, pulling on the thing, and about 80 feet later, the nylon was gone. I mean, the, the pipe was ready, you know, starting to drag on the ground. So we picked up the pipe, pulled it back, called up the manufacturer of these things, and they're like, oh, man, who would have thought? So what we're going to do instead, we'll use the ultra-high molecular weight plastic. This stuff is, is tougher than Superman's kneecap. Uh, you know, this will definitely, uh, this will hold up easily. There's no problem. We tried it out. We pulled it, yeah, it went definitely further than the 80 feet. It hit 120 feet before it was basically starting to drag again. And, you know, so not, not only did we need to be able to pull the pipe in 300 feet, but I also in the future wanted to make sure that, that the future us would have the ability to, to pull the pipe back out. So, you know, basically it was like, boy, we, we were stuck. We had no answer. So uh, in the meantime, we said, you know what, let's just continue cleaning with the overpass and let me sit there and stew over this. And we did just that. I mean, that gives you an idea now of, of what we're, of what it looked like without the pipe. But you can see the debris. You can see the floor. That, that all got cleaned and cleaned and cleaned and cleaned. And, and you know, this is all done by hand. So then we started on the east side where we did the same thing, where we had to, to basically, you know, cut uh, cut in a receiving pit and, um, and you know, remove all that pipe and so on and so forth. And so that's when, when one night I was sitting there thinking, okay, well, you know, how do you, how do you get something to slide along and how do you also distribute the, le the, the weight, the load uh, on as wide a thing as possible? And I thought, well, you know, speed, I mean, you know, it, that's that's what skis are you know it skis on sleds skis on on people whatever effectively why not uh, why not build a a little sled of, of, of some sort and so i sketched it out on the concrete to scale and that was literally the drawing that we used and then we went to the other side and now the, you remember how i said there was concrete uh, around the pipe around the transition coupling on the other side this one was about twice as big and I said, there is absolutely no way that, that we're going to do what we did last time. I mean, you know, it, it's, it, it, you just don't repeat the same mistake over and over again. So we went out and we rented a breaker for the excavator. 
And oh my God, uh, the, the, the thing was, uh, there's only, uh, when we were looking for them, there was three in the state for rent. This was the first one that came up. And, we, you know, I was sitting there hoping that, that, that this thing is going to really work. We laid the, the breaker up against there and then pulled the trigger and like one pound, boom, and a big old chunk blew off. So we knew, I mean, with, within no time flat, I mean, this was uh, minutes uh, that, that, that we got to this point. So, you know, must is get the right tool for the job for sure. And, uh, and you know, so the, the breaker cost me a thousand bucks for the day, big whoop. I mean, that, that was money well spent and, and actually money saved just by, by, again, you know, learning from what we had uh, done on the other side. <clears throat> so in the meantime, I, I went ahead and asked a fabricator to, to fab up these, these uh, sleds. I mean, just a trial run on, on these sleds to see if this would even work. So you could see the steel runners, you could see uh, the, the frame, uh, the insulator bands, I used the same thing and just welded those on. And then I also added outriggers and because I have the ultra high molecular weight material, I thought, well, let me put it on the outside and that'll keep the, the pipe aligned side to side. And the, the sled should, would, you know, hopefully slip right along. And uh, then it was time to try that again. So we assembled everything, put the pipe on the sleds. And then I also went ahead and got a dynamometer to see how much force it would take to actually pull this one stick of pipe because we were going to have to do this times, you know, the 300 feet of pipe. And I just wanted to make sure that the excavator that we had had enough grunt to be able to pull uh, the, the pipe, you know, all the way through the overpass. So, you know, we don't, we don't like surprises. I mean, we want to do whatever we can to avoid that. So we hooked this thing up and not only did it uh, run past the 120 foot mark, it went down all the way down the road, all the way back. And I mean, the, the, the sled, the runners were, were uh, had no wear on them. The, 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 there was ne next to no wear on the, on the asphalt. You could just see where it had slipped across. And in fact, they were still cool to the touch. So the next order of business was, okay, now that we've tried pulling it and we see that the, the sled's holding together, let's make sure that our theory of, of this is how, how we're going to make this thing through the overpass is going to fly. And so we brought out our test uh, piece out here and went ahead and, and loaded the thing into the overpass and we started to pull. So I want to point out here. This is a, again, that's three and a half inch thick steel. That's a 55 ton shackle. Not that we needed the capacity, but that was the size that, that would fit over three and a half inch uh, uh, pad eyes. And so then uh, I also needed a spreader beam because we couldn't just hook a chain straight up to the, the pad eye because then it would end up sawing itself right through the overpass. So we needed uh, two sets of chains. We used a spreader bar that, uh, that I went over to um, by a carpenter rigging, and, and they, they had uh, basically a, 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 a modular pre-assembled one, so, so we didn't have to have an engineer design and dream this thing up, so we could just buy it off the shelf. I had the uh, more sled runners uh, made so that the, that, the, that the spreader bar could actually slide, because we didn't want that just, you know, dragging and, and bouncing along, and so we started pulling, and it went just as planned. I mean, it, it, this, this was on the other side, the east side, we had uh, 600 feet of chain running through there in 20 foot segments. So we, we would pull, uh, remove a chain segment, pull, remove a chain segment and pull. And we pulled the, the pipe absolutely all the way through. It was a total success. So I went ahead and had, uh, we, we learned from, uh, from uh, the, the previous floods, the, the prototypes basically, we went ahead and modified them slightly, uh, and beefed them up a little bit, uh, not that they really needed it, but you know what, overkill is cheap because steel is incredibly cheap. So we, we went ahead and had these things made and then, uh, and then we had them powder coated also. And we also decided, you know what, let's put three per pipe instead of just two so that we can really, really distribute the load across the concrete. Because the bridge as, as uh, vehicles are going over the, the overpass, there, it's actually shaking and moving. So I, I didn't want anything to be grinding into, into the overpass and, and, you know, basically ruining their structure. So that was that. Uh, 
the next thing was let's go ahead and try and pre-assemble two sticks. Uh, I needed to show my guys how, how to use uh, come-alongs to, to pull the pipe together. And we went ahead and did that out here uh, in, in uh, the field where we stored all this equipment. And then it was our, our, uh, our director had asked, hey, before you actually commit to anything, put three sticks together and pull it from one end to the other and just make sure that there absolutely is no surprise. So we went ahead and did that. Here you see the, the sticks that are starting to get pulled in. Here's the inside view, and, and uh, here's the, the runners on the side uh, that, that keep everything centered. Here's the front view shot, and oh my God, the, uh, all of this careful planning and, and you know staring at the ceiling and trying to think this through at, at, um, at, at two in the morning was totally paying off. And then it was off and, and running. I mean, so uh, as, now, mind you, I, I do want to point out that at any given time, I had about three or five people on the site, myself included. So it was uh, me and, and either uh, uh, two other guys or, or, you know, maybe four other people. Uh, you know, and this was also not a continuous thing. I mean, it, uh, it, we had all the normal stuff that we normally do. I mean, I, you know, this was not part of our, our normal routine. And we're short staffed. And so, you know, basically we slipped this in as we could. Um, and, and it worked out just fine. We ended up pulling the thing all the way through with the, the, the 300 plus feet of pipe uh, and made it uh, through. And, uh, you know, it, it, it was perfect. I mean, everything, everything worked exactly as planned. Um, you know, here again, you can see just how lean and mean the, the, the work group is. I mean, that, that was a, at any given day when, when people were driving by, this is what they would see. You know, there, there wasn't a whole lot more uh, action going on. A lot of action, but not a whole lot of people. So now the next order of business was that uh, we needed to hydro test this because I didn't want to find out that, that a gasket had rolled or something. And so we, we went ahead and bolted instead of end caps, we bolted T's. Because I thought, you know what, now that the pipe is in there, there's no way that I'm going to be able to crawl into the overpass like we used to be able to do. Uh, there's just not enough room for a person to get in there. So in the future, if we ever need to get in there to make a repair to the pipe, it's going to have to be from the inside. So let's go ahead and add a T to both sides. Um, and uh, that, that solved that issue. And here you can see us, you know, assembling all this stuff. Uh, we had super, super tight clearances. I mean, there, there wasn't a whole lot of room to do all this, but, uh, but you know, we measured everything out ahead of time, bolted everything up, uh, you know, lots and lots of bolts, and the bolts were really big, and the wrenches were really big. And then came uh, the time to pressure test it. You know, we had to, to go ahead and flush the pipe, uh, chlorinate the pipe, and then we, we pressure tested it to 200 PSI. And I had to let it sit for four hours. And instead of that, we, we let it sit all the way over the 4th of July weekend, where every morning I would wake up and turn on the news to make sure that there wasn't the, you know, word of, of the water pouring out of the overpass on the Winton Street overpass over 880. And uh, you know, when we came back on uh, the, the following, whatever it was, Monday or, or Tuesday, uh, the, the pipe was still holding 195 PSI, so uh, it, it totally passed. So now it was a matter of basically tying the, the, uh, the, the pipe together to the existing. So we used Romac transition coupling and then a solid piece of pipe that I put a bunch of, um, a bunch of uh, uh, mega lug glands on because I was going to pour basically what we had before, just a much larger version concrete block so that that the pipe, the, uh, the asbestos concrete pipe, would be insulated from any movement as the bridge went up and down, or if there was any seismic movement, that the that the flex tens, those those telescopic joints, would be able to to take up the the movement rather than have it transmit over to the um, <coughs> to the asbestos concrete. So here, this was like kind of uh, the the last of the tie-in. These things, uh, by all rights, you, you know, given that they flex and move and pull in and out, you would think that they're the, the easiest thing and, and uh, a godsend to make up for any misalignment. They are an absolute bear. I mean, it, it is, you know, the thing moves in every which way that you don't want it to, you know. So 
Uh, but but no problem. I mean, we we got them in, uh, you know, totally uneventful. I mean, it's, it's the same thing as as we've done a bunch of times with the small 12 inches on uh, tanks, but just a much bigger version. And suddenly we were tied in. And uh, you know, uh, here again, I mean, this, I cannot emphasize enough. You know, look at look at the workforce I used for, uh, for this. I mean, this, this was not. You know, hordes and hordes of people. This wasn't, you know, uh, uh, three quarters of my crew. And um, you know, uh, here I say the the lean and mean uh, crew philosophy uh, it was was incredible. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned, it, it's not uh, a a matter of you know, can you afford to do something like this? And in my opinion, it's can you afford not to? Because believe me, these guys learn so much. They they. They develop professionally so much on a on a project like this. This gives them so much confidence uh, uh, that that you know uh, when suddenly we're we're faced with with big transmission main uh, issues, you know we're we're not flipping out, we're not freaking out. I mean, it, 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 you know it, it's a pipe. We we've, we've worked with it and uh, and and we've worked with it very successfully. Then came the day to celebrate. We had uh, our. Uh, uh, my good luck witch, uh, who is uh, the the uh, secretary out here, uh, she's retired now, but she came walking out with a bottle of champagne so that we can christen the overpass. We put it in the burlap bag so that there wouldn't be glass in our trench, and she went ahead and swung it and broke the uh, the, the the glass over there, and that was it. Um, believe it or not, it, it, by the end of all of this thing. Uh, as, as it was winding down, you know, this, this major project, the, the, the biggest thing that we'd ever done in-house had become, you know, basically this anti-climatic thing. And, and, you know, instead of there being this, this big outrageous, you know, uh, celebration and, and, uh, and anything, it was like, you know, we were already starting to think about what else do we have? I mean, because I know that, that we had a 27-inch uh, diameter force main that, that we needed to cut a section out of. That was something we would never have done had we not done something like this to demonstrate our abilities. We needed to, to add a 16-inch blow-off to our 36-inch inner tie. Uh, that was something we would never have done. And, uh, you know, long story short, it, uh, from this point forward, it was really just a matter of backfill, pour the concrete. And then I had a contractor come out and, and do the concrete work, uh, the, the center divide work, and that was it. Uh, when all was said and done, I want to say that, that we spent probably, it was right around, I think, $360,000 on this project, which is unheard of. I mean, you know, uh, uh, again, we, we, we got, uh, we were $30,000 into this just to find out that we're, we got nothing done when this whole thing started and had we you know brought in the the engineering firm and the consultants and then the contractors and and had they run into all of the problems you know uh, that, that we encountered with change order after change order this thing would have been an incredibly incredibly expensive uh, uh ordeal and uh, one that, that we wouldn't have felt very good about but uh, that was it so that's basically the end of the presentation that's amazing. You got through 50 slides in half an hour. Congratulations. I We trimmed way back because we thought it was going to either. I actually attached the uh, the city of Hayward, uh, the, that uh, that longer version of yours, the original version, so people can oh, okay. it all. Because I, I, it's basically this plus a lot more. So uh, lots and lots of excellent, excellent pictures. and. I just can't uh, tell you how much I am impressed with your, uh, and actually I, we've got a lot of positive comments. Let's see, Robert, Robert said, great innovation, Bert, Robert Scott. And uh, David Huey said, I like the slide innovation. Nice work, Bert. Reminds me of the old days and pushing <laughs> intake casings into a lake. That's interesting. Uh, that could be a story, Dave. We might be in, getting in touch with you <laughs> for a future presentation. Um, he also said that it was great. Thank you for the info on Can uh, Dave Huey. David Huey said, uh, "Thanks for the info on Can West Wire Saw Bert. Good stuff yeah. for this thick concrete work. And I might be getting one for my bamboo. So <laughs> I wrote it down. <laughs> I don't know what there to you do. go." Yeah, no, no, the, the, the wire saw is, is definitely a wonderful, wonderful option. I mean, so uh, if, if you ever need to, to remove a structure or a tank, 
I mean, in, in a wastewater treatment plant, if you need an old clarifier cut away or whatever, uh, the, the wire saw will, will just blow right through that. Great. And uh, Robert Scott asked, what happened to the sled structures? Did you leave them inside? I'm sorry, to, to the which? The sled structures. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that, that's what the pipe is sitting on. So, so that, that became the, the pipe support, you know, uh, is, rather than, than just leave the, the, the pipe laying on, on the ground, uh, they, they were the cradles. And, and so uh, they, they are the thing that are actually supporting the pipe within the overpass. And that's also what in the future will allow somebody to, to pull the pipe back out. And then you'll notice here, we also in, installed the casing this time around uh, when, when, we, uh, when we put this pipe through, we put a 48 inch diameter steel pipe around it so that in the future, you know, when, when this thing starts moving and hopping during an earthquake, that that pipe can actually move in and out because the, the way it was before, it was literally restrained in the end and, and that would not have uh, boded well for, for the pipe in, in a uh, seismic event. And so, you know, in the future, uh, it, while the, the bell ends won't fit through there, or maybe they will, uh, the sleds won't. So you just have to, to break open the, the, the concrete again and, uh, and then, you know, hook up an excavator and pull this stuff out. Uh, my assumption is that, that the pipe will outlive the overpass. I mean, uh, according to uh, McWayne, who sold us the pipe and their engineering team that I was able to access for free, um, yeah, this, this pipe should easily last 100 years. I mean, for sure, 75. So if there's a seismic event that, that, that causes uh, some kind of grief, then the overpass might have to be uh, demolished and the pipe gets replaced at that time. But, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that, that we're good to go. And like I say, if, if, if we do have any issues for whatever bizarre reason, we can always just take off the, uh, the, the flanges here, crawl in there, and, and either patch the, the pipe <clears throat> or pull in a new liner through that, you know, so uh, that's amazing. Basically, it's a win win win, no matter how you look at it. So Robert Scott wanted to, that's great. Did it uh, wanted to know, did you add the sled structures to the as built drawings? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so the as built. Uh, uh, <laughs> It, it, oddly enough, I mean, basically, the, the, the main most important thing is, is what are the fittings and, and what are the dimensions and where is all this stuff. So all that actually got sketched out on a piece of cardboard that we had laying around out there. Uh, and, then, and then eventually it got autocatted into, into, a, uh, into an actual, you know, legitimate as built. But yes, it, it does show the, the, the sleds. And then the other advantage to, to this thing is that now we actually have pictures. Whereas, you know, back in the day, you know, none of this stuff, you know, I mean, people obviously had cameras, but no one seemed to think to, to take a lot of photographs. Uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. So, I mean, you know, this, uh, uh, the, the photo journal is, is entered into the archives now. And you'll see, you know, that way you know exactly what you're dealing with. So when I'm long dead, and, and if anyone ever needs to, to pull this thing out again, they'll, they'll see exactly what they're working with. Luz, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's great. That's really great. And uh, Luz Pena, uh, Penilla, hi Luz, she said, uh, do you need, uh, did you need to provide any corrosion control to the sled structures? No, I, I, well, I mean, we we uh, we um, powder coated it. Powder coated them, uh, and then so you know, basically a, a, a really good paint. But uh, no, I mean, the, the interior of the overpass. I mean, it it, it does get a little bit of, of rain that, that drips in, but uh, but by the time any of that stuff starts rusting, uh, it because I, I, I already asked uh, uh, the. Um, the McWayne ductile iron people, you know, I said, hey, do, do we need to coat this pipe or anything? And they said, in this application, absolutely not. I mean, it just doesn't rain enough in California, and, and this isn't a salt spray environment. Um, so, no, that, that stuff will, will last and last and last. I think this for, is such for, a success story for so many. I mean, how many pipes go through um, bridges? I don't even know, but I've, I've gone over bridges where you feel that bump and then that bump again. So it's kind of yeah. nice to know what that is. <laughs> Yeah, and you know what, it's funny, I watched a, a similar project on, on the Foster City side, because just when we were doing this, there was a, a bridge uh, in either San Mateo or Foster City, I mean, because I know it's right there on the boundary, uh, that goes over Highway 92, where the same thing happened, but they took a different approach, and a much more costly approach than this. 
Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, it, it's really, it shows, and it, it must have made, brought you, all you guys uh, and gals close, people close to, closer together uh, in a profession. Oh, you bet. You know, building. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's, you know, I, I mean, that you can really see that they, there's a lot of pride in their, um, in their ability to do this and adding to their skill set and, uh, and certainly a massive savings uh, financially. But it was pretty okay. risky of you to do that. Didn't your director say well, something to you when you were getting started? What did your director say to you when we did, you oh, wanted to do this? My director said, you know, if anything goes wrong, this is a good, or, or, or what do you say? He said, um, what happens if anything goes wrong with this thing? And, and I said, oh, that's going to be the end of my career. And he said, yes, it's also going to be the end of mine. And, uh, and, 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 at that point in time, he said, you know what, uh, let, let's do this. And uh, I, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate. I mean, him, him and I do not necessarily always see eye to eye, but I appreciated no to no end uh, him going ahead and, and saying, you know what, go for it. And uh, and it, it paid off big time. You know, I mean, that, that, could, that structure, that design that you made, that the sled, that could actually be patented in some ways, I would think. I mean, that is something that uh, I'm sure there are other, other uh, uh, areas or, or, or people that could use that kind of thing. And, and who, would, that's such an, like Robert said, it's such an innovative idea. I mean, goodness. Well, you know, the truth be told, I mean, all, all the stuff, I mean, I've, I've done oddball things like this all along, I, I, and, and, you know, my take on it is, is I'm, I'm happy if, if anybody wants to, to replicate it, uh, by all means, uh, I, I'm not interested in, in getting money out of this thing. I mean, it, I, it's just something I'd like to share. You know, uh, if, if this can work for somebody else, uh, how cool would that be? You know, that, that's, a, that's a great thing to take to your grave. That's you know, knowing great. that helps other people. You know, we're all in this together. And that's just so, even though it happened a while ago, I think it's just such a great statement on your um your you know a, ability to do it in house with a small crew, so uh, yeah. And the funny I, thing is, is most, uh, the, uh, this uh, this guy uh, he was out there. He was the lead uh, for for the, the virtually the whole job. Uh, he he had been here for, for oh boy probably eighteen years. But the other two guys, uh, uh, Sean and then Art, who's not in this picture, <coughs> Sean had started in in this whole uh, water world. Uh, I want to say nine months earlier, and Art was brand new. I mean, he he uh, he had just started with us. So yeah, I mean, you know, the the skill sets got developed really fast. But I mean, it also goes to show you that that you can do this. I mean, you you, you don't need to have this this exotic, elaborate you know piping crew. You don't need to have this, this amazing equipment. I mean, you know, you can rent all this stuff. I mean, it's just a matter of, of you know thinking it through and and uh, and and being willing to to take on the challenge. Yeah, thinking outside the pipe. So, right. um, uh, Jeff G said, "Sorry, I missed uh, what this uh, skid slide material was. Looks like Dell." Oh, it's just a, it's short steel. It's, it's a hot rolled uh, A five seventy two grade fifty. I mean, it, it's A thirty six slash five seventy two grade fifty. So just a, a run of the mill structural steel. That's great. And then the, the, the slides, the, the skids were, I believe, like half inch thick. And and but I mean there there was no material that came off of them, not in, in pulling at 300 feet. So that's amazing. That, that stuff is gonna last and last and last and last. Well, I just um I, we're, we're uh, we do have a, a hard stop uh, in uh, a couple minutes, but I just wanted to uh, let you know that there's gonna be a survey that's gonna be posted in the chat field. And we really rely on uh, your feedback for, uh, uh, we look at every comment and it really informs us on future events and workshops that we put on. So if you wanna see more of this, I think uh, uh, Bert has uh, or not. more stories than time <laughs> of wonderful <laughs> things that he's accomplished. Um, but we would love to, we really would love to hear your feedback. And I can't thank Bert enough. I mean, he's really, uh, shared a, a fantastic success story. And I think that, uh, you know, any agency would take heart in seeing this, small or large, that there's so much that can be done in-house uh, mm -hmm. that if you just give people a chance and it's just, it's it's got to give everybody a great feeling. It's just, you know, that win-win. It's great. Absolutely. But there was a lot of thinking and prep work, you can see, that really went into this to make sure everything worked out okay, right? Absolutely. 
and no nobody got hurt no accidents no concrete no. dropping on cars no no <laughs> no one That's quick last thing. question i know we have to go really quick but did it take a long time to get caltrans to give you the okay to do this uh no because uh, like i said we we approached i sat there and lied like a rug and said that this had just happened i, I didn't mention that this thing was you know had been off for a year uh, and, and I said, it, it's a critical transmission main, uh, which it is, and, uh, and uh, we, we need to move on this. And so, like I say, when, when uh, emergencies happen, uh, all of a sudden, you know, all the, the regulatory roadblocks just evaporate. But, but you have to take advantage of it when, when, when they occur, because otherwise they, they start becoming just nightmares. You know, if, 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 uh, if, you don't, if you don't convince people that you need to get in and get out, uh, then that's that. And then the other thing is I told Caltrans, the great thing about this is, is we're not a contractor that, that's going to disappear. You know where the city of Hayward is. So if there's any issues, you know where to find us. You know, so I mean, that, that was, that was uh, uh, you know, comforting to them. Well, um, David Huey says, nice work, Bert. Uh, excellent work by your team. Uh, Robert Scott, outstanding work. I can't say it like you, Robert, though. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> no, not even close. But uh, um, yeah, a lot of compliments and well deserved. And boy, I I just I think this is like the funnest thing that I've worked on for. Uh, and you know, I've all I've appreciated all the other classes. It's been great. So you will also get the survey in your email. Uh, and once again, uh, we really appreciate your feedback and thank you for attending. And it looks like we got to run. <laughs> so have a great rest of your day. Uh, and we'll see y'all later. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Bert. Thanks so much. Bye now. Bye.